Hello everyone, welcome back to TNG Codes, and we're going to make a 2D top-down roguelike um, game. So it's just going to be a simple game. Think of it as Vampire Survivors worth aiming. There's only going to be like, <laughs> it's not going to be any like fancy weapons or anything, but I will show how to make them. The point of the series is to show how to set up the systems and make these things yourself. So yeah, after you do all this, you should be able to make your own roguelike. Um, it's not going to be one of stages and stuff, it's just going to be one big map, and you play it till you die. Um, I'll show how to make the menu select for maps, and I'll show how to make character selection, that has different perks, passives, um, abilities, weapons, stuff like that. And I will show how to make a system of picking up items, uh, well, drops, let's say like health up, speed up, and XP, so mobs will drop XP. And I'll show how to make a screen where you select a certain ability or passive once you level up, of course. So it's going to be very simple and not that long of a series. Um, it's just more complicated systems for people who don't know how to do them yet. Um, but yeah, you should be able to do what you want afterwards. And let's get started. So I'm obviously just going to get started with setting up my layouts and how things should be. That's the first episode. So normally I go into loadout, layout, sorry, not loadout, and I select personal, which is my preference of how my layout is, all I have is the animation window, animator window, lighting window, all open. That's just because I like them and I like this form of layout. Um, obviously, whatever you have is up to you. There's no right or wrong, just what works for you. So then I go into edit and I go into my project settings and in the editor, I scroll down and I tick this box, employment options. This just makes it so whenever I press play, as you can see, it's instant. There is no load time or compiling scripts, nothing. I just press play and it works. And then I like to go back into the window and go into my package manager. And I'm not gonna make, maybe at the end of the series, I might make one last episode where I make everything have specific sprites and be fancy. I just don't really like working on the pixel art that much. Um, I'll actually show you, this is what I, all I've made for the series and that's for the character selection screen. Everything else will just be default Unity stuff. And at the end, I might make more fancy things for the actual game. So, yeah, very simple. Now, let's get into how to make it look good, even if you don't have any sprites or anything. Of course, you can find sprites on the Asset Store, uh, download free sprites as long as they're not copyrighted, obviously. And, yeah, but I like to go into the project settings and scroll down till I see post-processing. And I like to install that, so I'm going to install that. And, yeah, you just click install, wait, and it'll install. All right, it just finished installing. Um, other packages might have other uh, things where you have to click install and click something else and then select what has to be installed. This, you just click install and installs. I'm going to close that window now and I'm going to go into my packages. And as you can see, post-processing is right here. So you go through the, and it's in the runtime folder is everything you're going to use. So first thing I'm going to do is we're going to go into our camera. I'm going to change the layer. I'm going to make a layer called post-processing. I'm just going to make it the last one because <laughs> this is all I'm going to use it for. Um, and then I'm going to drag a post-processing volume onto here and then a post-processing layer. And for that, obviously, the layer right here, I select post-processing. And then that's all done. And then here, I click is global. And then I have to make a post-processing profile, which in here, I'm just going to make a folder called graphics. And in here, I'm going to right-click it, create, and I'm going to select post-processing profile. I'm just going to leave it the default name. That's all you have to do. Go back onto the camera, drag it on, and that is it. Now I can start using this. Um, I'm going to finish making the folders quickly though. So we'll have an animation folder. We'll have a sprites folder. That's for the graphics. That's all that done. And we'll have a, a scripts folder. Oh, not in the graphics. And then a prefabs folder. Then I make that a capital. And yeah, that is pretty much it. We will have prefabs for the player, or let's just call it friendlies, because the player will have bullets and stuff himself, and then we'll make one for enemies. And then we're gonna make a prefabs folder for um, entities. This will be stuff like health ups, healing potions, stuff like that, just simple things. And in the scripts, obviously, we're going to have the core scripts. This will be like the game manager, 
stuff that keeps track of scores, stuff like that. And then we'll have the player scripts. And we will have the enemy scripts. Enemy scripts. So, very simple. Um, nothing too complicated. That is almost everything done. I'm going to go into the camera and I'm going to change the background. You'll see this on almost every one of my tutorials. I like to go for this orangey look. Uh, personally, I just like it. It is very satisfying to me to look at. Um, yeah, so I'm going to have it. And I'll show you the post-processing. Um, I'm just going to make a random thing. Let's make a square. Obviously, you can see hand left. Now, if you go into my camera and add effect bloom, uh, Open it up and I click all. Now look at the square on the left. Well, <laughs> the background's very bright too, so yeah, let's make the background something dark actually, which is something I never really do. Um, let's go for a more darkish. Yeah, something like that, you know. It's, it doesn't look that great, but yeah, as you can see, now the square is glowing. Um, I just think it looks nice. Obviously, I can change the color, something pink, whatever. And yeah, that's how to make your games look a little better, even if you don't have something fancy, uh, any sprites or anything. Uh, if you make the color black, it actually looks best. As you can see, pitch black with the nice neon pink. All these things look really nice with the black background. Very cool. So yeah, that is our <laughs> starting setup done, actually. Uh, let's do one last thing, and that is make the canvas, which here, UI canvas, this is something I always do on a side project because I always use a canvas. Uh, I'm going to select with scale of screen size, and I'm going to go in here and I'm going to change free aspect to my monitor's resolution. Obviously 1080p is what most people have. And here is the canvas revolution, uh, revolution resolution, I'm going to leave that how it is. Um, and yeah, that is basically the project setup done. We can make one last thing, and that is the game manager, which I'll turn on this. So yeah, it's right in the middle. I'm just going to leave it there, and I'm probably also going to make a sound manager. I will put sound in this game, just for the sake of tutorial. I like to put the canvas, well, I actually like to leave it at top. Uh, no, take that out. I'm going to put the camera below these, and yeah, anything that stays untouched, like I don't want to move it around, I leave it at the top. Camera I might put on my player, I can move around, yeah. I'm going to download one last package, uh, I'll show you the name of it, <laughs> if this can load, <laughs> I'll be back when it's done. Good old Unity and it's <laughs> very slow loading, um, yeah, this is something I like to use a lot, you can search it in an asset store. Um, it's a very nice pixel font. It, obviously, it's nice if you like it. I like it personally. I think it looks good. Um, and yeah, I'm just going to import this. Uh, click import, select all. And yeah, there we have it. We can make another folder in here called imports. Because we're probably going to import some sound as well. Uh, sound packages for online. And yeah, there's the fonts. All you have to do is you have to convert these into... Um, I'll show you what you have to do because if you go into the canvas, let's say you make a text, of course download, well, import the TextMess Pro Essentials, there it is. Now as you can see it's not here, this font is not there yet. So all we have to do is we have to convert, um, uh, pretty sure it's this, no. Come back to you in one second, and all we're going to do is we're going to convert this font into a TextMesh Pro font. Ah, sorry, I found out. I can't believe I missed that. It's um, it's right here. <laughs> uh, the TextMesh Pro thing in the window. Obviously, I'm using. Uh, here's my version of Unity. It's the 2021.3.11f1. That is the Unity version I'm using. And all I do is I've got TextMesh Pro, TextMesh Pro, sorry, and I click Font Asset Creator. And as you can see, by default, it is selecting this font right here. Uh, here are any fonts you have in your project. I select it, it's there. I change nothing, and 
I just click generate font atlas and I say save. And I just click save. So there it is. There is your TextMesh Pro font pack. Well, font asset. And now if I go into here, I can change this to the pixelated font. So very simple. This is pixelated. Only thing you might not like is the fact that it is all, um, what's it called? It's all capitalized. There's no like capital or, I mean, there's no lowercase. Um, but yeah, I like this. This is the font I'm going to use. And now you know how to convert a normal text font to TextMesh Pro to use it with the modern Unity stuff. So yeah, that is the project setup done. There is nothing else we will be doing in this episode. Uh, and the next one, we're going to go into the player. We're going to make a player that moves around, camera that follows on the player. We're going to make the player have a point that it points at a mouse. And we're also going to make a point where the player can shoot from. And we're also going to make it so when a player moves his mouse to the left of the screen, the player flips looking at the left. And when a player moves his mouse to the right of the screen, the player flips looking to the right. And we'll also make the gun properly flip with that. Um, but yeah, that's all we're doing. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll just get rid of this console. And I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Bye.